welcome to this lecture. Till now, we had looked at some introductory topics and then we had looked at life cycle models and then we said that for last two decades or so, the agile models have become very important. They are being used extensively in the industry and the main reason for that is that the project characteristics have changed. In the old times, all programs were developed from scratch and they were multi year projects and that is the reason the waterfall based models were very popular, but then slowly the project characteristics have changed and of late the service oriented projects have become prevalent and that is one of the reason that the agile models are being extensively used. And we had discussed that agile is actually an umbrella term which uh, denotes some characteristics of the life cycle, but then there are several life cycle models which satisfies this criteria. And uh, last lecture we had looked at extreme programming and we are just starting to discuss about the scrum. Scrum is a very popular agile model which is being used. Uh, Let us uh, start with scrum today. Scrum consists of uh, small teams which are self organizing. Uh, by self organizing we mean that the team members by themselves choose their own roles, activities. There is no chief programmer or somebody who assigns them activities, but they self organize themselves and decide who will do which one best. There are several technical terms here and also concepts. Let us just look at that. One of the main principle is the sprint. A sprint is something like an iteration or a time box in as used in the other agile models like extreme programming. The development work is done over several sprints, each sprint is typically about a month long and as the software gets developed, the requirements get built. Starting with some initial requirements, the initial requirements are uh, refined, more requirements are added and this is listed in something called as a product backlog, typically an excel file where the requirements are kept track of, the requirements are actually called as user stories as in other uh, agile models which are simpler form of functional requirements. This diagram characterizes the main principles in the scrum. The product backlog is all the requirements. These are maintained in a excel file and uh, each requirement is called as a user story and as you are saying that user story is an informal description of a requirement. There is a sprint planning meeting which decides uh, which uh, backlogs, which product backlog, which uh, stories to take up next and those selected user stories are taken up in the next sprint. The selected user stories are kept in the sprint backlog and the scrum is a month long about 3 to 4 weeks and every day the team members work towards completing the sprint backlog and they meet every day which is called as the daily scrum meeting. In the daily scrum meeting they discuss what they achieved yesterday 
and what they will do today and uh, is there any difficulties that they are facing. And at the end of the scrum, the sprint backlog would have got adjusted and an increment of the software would have got built. And this is reviewed in a sprint review meeting and the product increment that gets uh, approved in the sprint review meeting is installed at the client side. And this cycle continues until all the product backlog gets adjusted. And uh, please understand that the product backlog is dynamic in nature. As the work progresses, more user stories are put into the product backlog and some user stories may get deleted because of requirements change. As we discussed in the schematic representation of the scrum, sprint is the one of the main uh, technicalities in the scrum. It is analogous to an XP iteration or a time box, usually one month. In one sprint, software increment is designed, coded and tested and no changes entertained during, during a sprint. So, once the product backlog items that is user stories have been selected, the development starts and the main idea here is that once the development starts, the developer should not be disturbed because otherwise it will never converge and therefore, as a rule once the features that are most accepted or stable have been selected, these are developed during a sprint. The sprint as I was saying is the possibly the most fundamental process flow. It is a month log at the end of the sprint some working software comes out which is the incremental product functionality. During the sprint, no outside influence is allowed. That means, the scrum backlog which contains the user stories to be completed during the sprint are frozen. And during the sprint, each day starts with a daily scrum meeting, where a review is done about what was achieved yesterday and what to do today and are there any obstacles that any team member is facing. These are some of the terminologies in the scrum framework. The roles that is the team members they assume some roles. One of the team member is the product owner. Another team member is the scrum master and then there is the team members. We will see what these roles mean and what are their responsibilities. And then there are the scrum ceremonies. One is the sprint planning ceremony. In the sprint planning ceremony, the user stories to be taken up for the next sprint from the product backlog is decided. Sprint review ceremony is done after a sprint is complete to review that the incremental software that has got developed is it all right. The sprint retrospective and the daily scrum meeting. The daily scrum meeting we said that it is uh, done a daily meeting in the morning, the team members just check what was done yesterday and what will be done today and uh, are there any obstacles. These are the artifacts that are maintained. One is the product backlog which contains the user stories. The sprint backlog that these are the selected user stories from the product backlog that will be completed during the sprint. 
and then there are various types of burn down charts which uh, are useful in uh, monitoring the progress of the development. Now, let us look at the different roles of the team member one is the product owner. So, very important role the product owner has the customer perspective and uh, represents customer interests. He can be a member who is a part of the customer organization, understands the customer requirements well, interacts with the customer and then there are the development team members which are 5 to 9 people with cross functional skills like coding, design, testing, quality assurance and so on. And then one of the team member is scrum master. The scrum master is also known as the project manager. The scrum master is the management representative in the team. The role has the responsibility of uh, facilitating development, any obstacles that are faced talk to the management facilitate and also is a buffer between the team and outside in influence. Now, let us look at the responsibilities of the different roles. The product owner as you said is the customer perspective may be a employee of the customer organization and uh, understands the software well, defines the features of the product, decides on the release date, prioritizes new features, adjust features and priority in every iteration and accepts or rejects the work result. So, during the sprint review meeting. The scrum master as we said is that the project manager is the management representative in the team, removes any obstacle that the team facing, hardware not working, network issues etcetera, etcetera. Ensures that the team is fully functional and productive, shields the team from external interference liaisons between the management and the team and also with the customer. The scrum team typically 5 to 10 people, they have expertise in various areas like quality assurance, programming, user interface design, testing and so on. The teams uh, members are self organizing, they select their own roles, the one that they can do best. The scrum team Sometimes members may leave or new members may join, but it is uh, ensured that when the sprint is in progress, membership change is not allowed, otherwise the development work will get hampered. There are three main ceremonies, the sprint planning meeting where the sprint backlog is selected from the product backlog. The daily scrum, it is a daily meeting, the team members meet to review what each member did the previous day and what will be achieved today and any obstacles that they are facing. The sprint review meeting is conducted at the end of the sprint to check whether the developed increment is all right. The sprint planning produces the sprint backlog from the product backlog. Here the product owner who understands the customer requirement well and the team member they decide which user stories to take up next. Obviously, the product owner would like to select those stories, user stories which are most value adding to the customer and the team members will like to take up those uh, stories which uh, will require least cost of development. 
but uh, the scrum master ensures that during a sprint planning meeting where they select the spr uh, sprint backlog to be completed in one month that the team agrees to realistic goals otherwise it will put undue pressure on the team or they may not have enough work. The daily scrum meeting is a morning every day, very small meeting about 15 minute stand up meeting to indicate that they just uh, meet to discuss and uh, they do not allow it to become long meeting. It is not a problem solving meeting just to take status of what was done yesterday, what they are planning to complete today and are they facing any obstacles and this is the one of specific concern for the project manager, the scrum master who would try to remove the obstacles that are being faced. The daily scrum is not really a problem solving session as we said, it is just for collecting information and removing any obstacles. Here the team members make informal commitments to each other and to the scrum master and uh, this is the way that the scrum master can track the progress of the team. The sprint review meeting is done at the end of the sprint. The team presents the increment that has been completed typically in the form of a demonstration of the new increment that has been completed. It is an informal meeting, this two hour preparation should be enough and the participants are typically customer representatives, management representatives, product owner and other team members. The product backlog contains all the work that needs to be completed towards the development. There are two types of uh, entries here, these are typically maintained in excel file. One is the story based which are basically something like functional requirements, simpler form of uh, functional requirements like allow the user to search and replace or allow the user to create new book entries and so on. But the Another type of entry in the product backlog are task based. These are not really functional requirements, but small items that might have to be completed which are not yet been done. For example, improve the exception handling facilities or refine the graphical interface and so on. And once the entries have been populated in the product backlog, it is prioritized by the product owner on a continuous basis. The product backlog is typically maintained by the product owner and it is typically a spreadsheet something like this, different priorities, high priority, very high priority, high priority, medium priority and so on. The sprint backlog are the subset of the backlog items which are selected for the next sprint and here the sprint backlog even items can get added here because uh, the members, team members may find that some items need to be completed. For example, the database connectivity has to be completed and so on. So, they update it daily. As uh, we mentioned that the sprint backlog changes during the development because team members may add new entries, they can remove unnecessary tasks, but then the sprint backlog is maintained by the team. Unlike the product backlog which is maintained by the product owner, the sprint backlog is maintained by the team. There are some charts to keep track of the progress of the work. These are very simple charts, but they are very effective. 
three main types of charts are used the sprint burn down chart which is how much progress has been achieved during a sprint release burn down chart how much progress has been achieved till the next release product burn down chart this is for the entire work to complete how much progress has been achieved let us look at these charts the first one is the spring burn down chart it uh, captures how much progress has been achieved in the current sprint or more accurately how much how many hours are remaining for the sprint to complete as you will see the diagram the chart shows the estimated amount of time to complete and at the end of the sprint the number of hours remaining will burn down to zero it's typically not a straight line because sometimes the work progresses very fast sometimes there are obstacles not much progress is done over some days and so on this is a burn down chart and as the days progress here the hours remaining comes down every day it is updated the chart is updated the release burn down chart is uh, for the next release how much work is remaining each release can consist of many sprints and as each sprint completes this gets updated the product burn down chart is uh, how much work remaining until the development completes so we have the estimated here and then the real burn down and then the velocity with how, how quickly these are being burned down scrum is typically designed for small teams but then there are some who have tried it for large projects for example jeff sutherland is reported that he has experimented with over 800 people which is called as the scrum of scrums the work is divided among many scrum teams the product owners the scrum masters meet and they decide on the features that will be done on each uh, team and it is also called as a meta scrum we have been looking at various life cycle models starting with very intuitive classical model classical waterfall model and then various waterfall based models and then the evolutionary and the incremental models and some models based on those principles and then we were focusing on the agile models now let us start our discussion on the requirements analysis and specification this is a important phase in software development before we start discussing requirements analysis and specification first let us try to answer the question that what is a requirement a requirement we can define as a capability or condition required from the system to be developed a system typically consists of many capabilities and conditions for example if we are developing a library software then the capabilities may be we can create books can create members we can issue books return books and the conditions may be that uh, to be a web based software and so on let us see in more detail but then we can define roughly that a requirement is a capability or a condition that is required of the system a capability is a 
facility that the software provides to the users. For example, the users can issue book, return book, etcetera. Each of that is a capability of the software and condition is uh, not really a facility provided, but then it is more general purpose. For example, it runs on it is a web based software and so on. As we proceed, we will be able to make a distinction between the capability, we will understand what are the capabilities, how to identify and the conditions that are required from the system. Now, let us see how to go about doing the requirements analysis and specification. What are the main activities that are involved to carry out requirements analysis and specification? The first work that needs to be done is to understand what really the customer has in mind. That is, we will have to gather the requirements from the customer. Hopefully, the customer has all the requirements in their minds. We need to gather this by meeting the customer and using few techniques that we will discuss and then we need to analyze what we have gathered from the customer because as we gather the requirements it can have several problems in the requirements we will identify what are the problems and how to overcome them and once we have got all the requirements and we have overcome all the problems in that then we get down to requirement specification that is we document all the requirements that have been gathered and all the problems that have been after all the problems in that have been removed. Prepare the SRS document which captures the requirement, the SRS stands for software requirement specification document and as you will see it is an important skill how to write the SRS document. We have to write it in a form that succinctly captures all the requirements, well organized according to some accepted standards of uh, requirement specification and the requirements have to be clear to the clients by looking at the SRS document they should be able to check that it meets all their requirements and also the development team members, it is a valuable document and by reading the SRS document they should be able to know what is to be done. The SRS document development, writing the SRS document is a very important skill. In the next lecture, we will see how to do requirements analysis and specification and how to develop the SRS document, we will look at some case studies and based on that we will see what are the issues and how to go about doing the requirements analysis and specification. Thank you.